In this lesson, I'll teach you how to perform the chi-square test. The question reads, the following data were collected in a multi-site observational study of medical effectiveness in type 2 diabetes. Three tests were involved, a health maintenance organization, a university teaching hospital, and an independent practice association. Type 2 diabetic patients were enrolled in the study from each site and monitored over a three-year observation period. The data shown displays the treatment regimen of patients measured at baseline by site. Use the data to test the hypothesis that the two variables, site and treatment regimen, are independent, meaning that there are no difference in treatment regimens across sites. Let's take a look at some key formulas that we'll be using. This symbol right here, which looks like a capital letter X, is actually a Greek letter chi. Okay. So by calculating what is to the right of this equation, we find out our chi value. And from there, we can determine whether to accept or reject the null hypothesis. That being said, let's go ahead and state our null hypothesis. Our null hypothesis will be that the treatment and the sites are independent, meaning there's no relationship between the two. So our null hypothesis is that site and treatment are independent. Our alternative hypothesis will be the opposite of this, that the site and treatment are not independent. Another way to understand this is that they are related to each other. Looking at this formula, we have the subscript i and j. i represents the row, and we have three rows. One, two, three. One, two, three. And we also have three columns. One, two, and three. This means that we will have nine e values that we'll be using to calculate our chi-square value. For example, if we wanted to calculate row one, column one, we would use this value and that value. Let's go ahead and calculate that right now. 1,700 times 615, and the n value represents the grand total, which is 3581. So we'll do this again. Let me show you a few more. That way you get the hang of it. 1 and 2 would be 1,700 times 1,631 divided by 3581. And one more for good measure. Actually, let's just do row 3 and 3. We would have 1109 times 1,335 divided by 3581. So you need to come up with nine of these values, which we'll then plug into here to come up with our value for chi-square. If we go ahead and calculate this, you should end up with 291.1. For this one, 774.3. And for this very last one, 413.4. Now let me show you how we plug these numbers into the formula. So looking over here, we will look for this observation, 294, that's this part right here, 294 minus what corresponds to it, which was E11, 291.1, 291.1, 291.1, one, and we square this, raise it to the power of 2, and divide by 291.1. Now we'll do this nine more times for each of these observations. So the next one would be 827, 827 minus the value that we found earlier, right over here, 774.3, 774.3, raise that to the power of 2 over 774.3. And since we skipped a few up here, I'll do the same thing down here where we have that last calculation as 404 minus 413 decimal 4 raised to the power of 2 over 413.4. Now when we calculate this, we should get our chi-square observed. We'll then compare that to the chi-square critical, which we'll obtain from a table that will be shown in a moment. So the calculation, if you do this correctly with all nine observations, you will get 34.63. The significance level that we'll be using is 0 
the question doesn't mention it. So if they don't just use a significance of 95%, which is 0 0.05, we need to also calculate the degrees of freedom and we'll use this formula. We had three rows, three minus one, and three columns. Three minus one, that's two times two, which is four. And we'll use this table. So V here represents the degrees of freedom, it's four. Alpha is our significance level, 0 0.05, and that's our value. That's our chi-square critical, 9.4877. So anything beyond that is rejected. Now, because chi-square distribution is a right-skewed distribution, the distribution will look like this, where if something is right-skewed, it will be pushed to the left, and 9.48, let's say, is right here, where that right there is zero, 9.48. So anything to the right should be rejected. And our value that we found was 34.6. 34.6 well exceeds this rejection region. So it would be somewhere over here in the future. And so we reject, we will reject the null hypothesis. We can conclude that there is sufficient evidence at 0 0.05 that the site and the treatment are related. Think about it, we are rejecting the null hypothesis in favor of this, so this means that they are related when it's not independent.